So the the script is um, if, if I were to kind of kind of demo this, um, mm -hmm. um, the script is really designed to be run by a cron job from mm -hmm. a, a Unix or Linux machine on a periodic basis, mm -hmm. and you know there are a number of flags that can be supplied to the script to you know cause it to perform different functions. So kind of the the, the basic usage is um, pulling in hosts from Vectra that have a tag. Mm -hmm. So basically a you know, tag that's added to a host that um, indicates that you know, the analyst wants enrichment or wants to get enrichment data from mm -hmm. cyber reason. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like a manual workflow. <clears throat> the This is on, is it, and this is done on your side. Yeah, it's, it's done on our side. The, the other, um, the other, kind of workflow is an automatic workflow based on our threat and certainty scoring. So this particular page you're seeing right here is uh, Cognito Detects Hosts page UI. Mm -hmm. so this is where we have any of our, any hosts that we've detected, you know, suspect malicious activity from based on network behaviors. We have a host container, you know, for, for that host. Mm -hmm. Just like Sacha was saying, since we're network based, we don't have any visibility into you know, um, you know, processes or Got it. Uh, sometimes who's logging in, what department, you know, you know, kind of information that a lot of times is available from the, you know, from the endpoint itself. So it's that kind of information that, um, that we're pulling in. And one of the things that we'll probably do in the near future is, um, you know, if there's been anything detected by the cyber region, uh, excuse me, cyber reason, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, endpoint from a, um, you know, I, I guess I guess that's what you guys call the the, the malops. Mm -hmm. That's something we'd probably pull in and present a link back to that uh, view. Got it. Uh, to the notes of the host, because we've done similar things with other. Mm -hmm. well. Right, right. No, yeah, I know. What you, I know what you're talking about. That's okay. a pretty common one. Yeah. Um, so just for the sake of, um, sake of kind of demonstration here, I, so there's, there's basically, like I was mentioning, kind of like two workflows, like a manual workflow. Mm -hmm. So if I was looking at this host and I was like, okay, this thing's doing some interesting activities, you know, but I really don't have any, any, you know, and it has to use that specific tag. Yeah. I, so I, I, well, it doesn't have to be this one. It's whatever one the, the user specifies on the, on the as an argument. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's customizable. And in okay. this case, I'm just running this with, um, you know, running this with that single tag and not also it, it not running it with the, the threat and certainty scoring thresholds mm -hmm. either just, just for the sake of demonstration purposes. Mm -hmm. So based on that tag, um, I can see based on the output that, you know, it was able to find an IP in cyber reason, but um, it's also telling me that there's multiple sensors that had the same IP at one point and none of them are currently active. Right, right. So it's basically, in this case, it's going to add a tag back to this host saying, hey, um, you know, multiple sensors had the same IP, no, no active ones. So this is just kind of like an information saying, you might be able to find something in cyber reason, but I can't tell you what the right sensor is. Right, uh, makes sense. I have. So, the the other workflow, like I mentioned, um, is um, based on threat and certainty scoring. So that's one of the key things about our system is the the dynamic scoring of hosts based on um, you know the attacker behaviors that have been observed. And you can see this one appears basically buried ninety nine ninety nine mm -hmm. top right corner, which is the highest scores that a that a host can have. So if I were to rerun this host or uh, rerun the script with um, thresholds of 50 and 50, mm -hmm. it will, you know, find that particular host, pull back information on it, apply it as tags. And now if I were to, you know, and again, the, the intent is that this would be run kind of in, in the background on a periodic basis. Right. Um, so that when something does make it in there and Got these it. are the tags, I recognize that, all that information. Yeah, exactly. Now based, based on the, based on this information, if I, you know, came to the conclusion, ah, I want to get this guy off the network for a bit, you know, I could, you know, use a, 
you know, add a tag like block, you know, and assuming the, the script is running in the background or periodically um, with, um, you know, that, that tag, right? Mm -hmm. um, on block tag. And when your analysts, are, when, you're, when your users are using it, they're doing it like this with the command window? Or are you through, through, the, through the UI? Yeah, so like th this would be running in the background from from a host that's you know all, always running. They wouldn't necessarily be interacting with this. I'm just this is just for demonstration purposes. I got it. Okay. Yeah. But so, they, so the people who the most most users would be doing exactly what you're doing, just adding tags. Yeah, just just adding tags to to interact with. So I've added a tag block that mm -hmm. the script is looking for, mm -hmm. right? And this you know, based on this flag, this should isolate or create an isolation rule. Right. For whatever reason. Right. Um, and, you know, I can see that now it's it's actually coming, you yes. know, one of the tags is coming back isolated. Isolated is true. Kind of refresh this page, you know, so I can see the new tags. Um, I can see that um, it is isolated. Um, and also I can, you know, see that, you know, an analyst, you know, manually block this host mm -hmm. at this particular date and time. So you're saying, and then there's, you know, the last option of, you know, un unblocking it right. um, as well. So, right, um, right. I know what you're talking about. So yeah, the actions were taken. So the script, you see, you're talking about the script running in the background. Yeah. Um, that's just kind of, that's the standard thing for you guys. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There isn't so they as so long as the peop, the your users would be working with these tags and the scripts doing its own thing in the background, then they're not interacting with it. Correct. And you said there's some auto, they can also set up automatic workflows to do the same, right? The um, the, the automatic the one or the, the the one that doesn't require any um, it, you know, analyst interaction is is the is you know, the way the script set up or the way the script's designed is just for context only based okay. on. <clears throat> because the threat and certainty scoring in our system is is one of the ways we prioritize or it is the way we prioritize um which hosts we feel the analyst should be investigating so got it okay we say look at everything that's in the critical quadrant so you know very complementary workflow is to you know pull the context out of cyber reason for anything that happens to be in that critical quadrant got it okay that makes sense um, and all the data displays in those tags, correct? Am I correct? Yep, that's correct. Got it. Okay. That's, the, that's a big part of what we do here is not necessarily like spend time explaining your side because I'm sure you, you guys have done more than adequate your, on your side. It's like, say, hey, you're, pull, you're taking this cyber reason information and you're going to go to Vector and you're going to see it here. So I need to send them to the right place so they know where to look for that cyber reason information. And then, you know, if they need to know more about Vector, then they could take it themselves, however you know, they, they can learn that themselves. That's, 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 we don't usually spend our time documenting other people's products. So. Right. Okay, that makes sense so far. Um, any configurate, I'm assuming, do you have some configuration to set up the API connection, right? Yeah, there is. Um, so in the script, basically there's just a few. Um, is, it, is, it, is it all script or UI? It's, it's, it's all, it's all text-based. Okay. So, let's see. Okay. Basically, that I do need to tell people on our side. You know, you gotta do this. You're gonna need to do this on on the other side. Yeah. Um, so the there's there's a config file. Mm -hmm. It's basically very very straightforward. It has a section for um, the Cyber Reason server, mm -hmm. the port for Cyber Reason, the IP or host name for the Cognito brain and then mm -hmm. the API token for the Cognito brain. So, so this stuff is documented on, what? you know, in the, in the script, script readme. Okay. So there is a, there's a readme here um, that walks through how to install the script, how to configure it. Got it. Also, so if, if the configuration is incomplete, the script will actually, you know, when it's attempted to be run, it will actually tell you that, Hey, you got you're, it. That's public. That page you're showing me is publicly viewable. Yes, it is. Cool, because then I will send them there. Because it looks like you've done. Um, I mean, you'll do. You guys know it better than me, so you'll do. That looks fantastic. That'll get our users just in the right direction for sure. sure. Um, 
last question. The other question I think that I can think of, um, does it require any installation on your site? Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking of one like Domesto where you went and you installed Domesto and you know you get every integration that Domesto is in development, whether that be you know, QRadar or Splunk or whatever. You know, there's hundreds of them, I remember. And we were just in there. You installed Domesto, it's in there. Mm -hmm. um, is it similar or is that part also part of this topic you're showing me? Does it require any special installation or you have Vectra and you have this? Um, no, the, the script, the script is basically a piece of middleware. So uh -huh. it's, you know, it's not like Demisto, but you know, you, you can think of the, I mean, Demisto is obviously an orchestration platform. This is right. a middleware script. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So as long as you start the script, but that the, the script is available with Vectra. When you uh, yeah, I mean, you, it, it doesn't it doesn't come along with the system. It's something that we provide um, provide for anybody who's interested in it. Got so, it. So, so they contact your guys as like support or customer service. Or yeah, anything. I mean, it's 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 actually posted to our GitHub repo. Got it. So anybody can download it. No, I, I, the reason I asked too is I'm thinking you know we've done Splunk and Q Radar and so forth. We actually have to like physically install a file, and that's it. Didn't sound like that's what this is. Well, this, this is, this is physical. I mean, this is install. This is probably a little bit more than that. I mean, this is actually installing the script, any, you know, I mean, it, it's written in Python. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's prerequisites of Python, the correct modules, you know, which, which it'll, you know, if you install it, you know, like this fashion from directly from GitHub, mm -hmm. uh, it'll actually install all the dependencies. So all the stuff. Yeah. Makes yes, sense. The initial dependency is having Python and PIP.